Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Rex North and at the team here at the Clean Tech Open. In the room here at uh, Redwood City, we have uh, my colleagues Nancy Bahamondes and Helen Lambert. Uh, Helen Lambert is our programs manager and Nancy is on the front lines when it comes to answering your calls and emails and tickets and so forth. So uh, our goal here today is to make sure that we cover all the mechanics of entering the Clean Tech Open. We give you some of the major reasons and that we answer your questions about this year's Clean Tech Open. We've added this extra session just to make sure that uh, we can answer questions for those of you who couldn't make last week's uh, presentation. There'll also be another one early part of next week if you want to attend that we'd be delighted to have you back now everyone's on mute right now so that we can uh, oh you haven't muted anyone okay okay so you're not on mute actually right now so if anyone has any initial questions you want to uh, to ask us at this juncture then we can we can do that right now otherwise we'll launch straight into the presentation anyone want to ask anything before we get started no Okay, very good. Well, we're going to jump straight in and uh, we'll, we'll launch into uh, this year's Clean Tech Open. Our goal this morning is to cover all the, uh, the ways to make darn sure near as darn it that your application will get accepted this year and we'll talk a little bit about what that means. We want to cover some background for the Clean Tech Open. We'll cover the uh, impact and history of the Accelerator and the competition. We'll talk about how the Accelerator and competition work. Uh, we'll then cover, as I mentioned, the mechanics of applying, and then this kind of the core section, which is what it takes to make sure your application will get accepted. And then, of course, we'll have a time where we can answer your questions as we go through this. This is what the CleanTech Open ecosystem looks like. Uh, turn on lights, please. The, eco the ecosystem. Is there a shared right? desktop happening? I'm not seeing it. Say again. Is there a shared desktop? Yes. Okay. I, I'm I'm not seeing it. I'm I must have I may have to get out and rejoin or something. I'm not Now is everyone it. else seeing the slides that I'm showing? Yes. Yes. So are you logged are you logged into WebEx? Yeah, yeah. I am. Well except I I uh I did something that uh caused a glitch, so maybe I'll I'll have to do. Okay, so if you don't mind, I'm going to. Just well, keep keep going, and I'll 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 man, I'll figure out how to rejoin. What's your name? I'll stay on the phone. Stan Klein. I'll stay on the phone, okay. but I'll, I may have to. Uh, my my system looks like um, it's having some peculiarity. All right, Stan. Well, well, perhaps you just want to log back into the meeting. Uh, we'll keep going and uh, let us know in a little while, if you will, that you you're seeing the slides. Okay. Okay. All righty. So uh, this is really the, a key part of what we're aiming to introduce you to. It's the, the Clean Tech Open network of networks. Really, involvement in the Clean Tech Open is as much about the network we'll introduce you to as anything else. We're talking about a, a big network, certainly the biggest clean tech network uh, that we know of worldwide. It includes uh, venture capitalists, and government and foundations, individual donors, utilities, corporations, service providers, and the U.S. national labs. Uh, it's a very big public-private partnership, in other words. And you'll see that there are many, many people involved in the team that brings the Clean Tech Open to you. Uh, the organizers of the Clean Tech Open across the U.S. number slightly more than 100 people. They're almost all volunteers who are working to make this happen. Uh, and under them, they have a large number of individuals who work with them to uh, to make this uh, to make this function in each of the regions. So altogether, there are well over 2,000 volunteers in the in, in the network uh, that uh, that drive this whole process. Our mission is to find, fund, and foster entrepreneurs with big ideas that address today's most urgent energy, environmental, economic challenges. In other words, we're looking for the kinds of technologies that will really make a difference. We run the world's largest clean tech accelerator, and uh, that's what you are joining. Uh, founded in 2006 by a terrific group of people, very much Bay Area based in Silicon Valley. Uh, we are a 501c3 not-for-profit, so everything we do is about helping early stage clean tech companies get off the ground. Uh, as I mentioned, now over 2,000 
volunteer individuals. There are seven regions in the U.S. covering 33 states, but it doesn't matter where you are in the U.S., you can apply for the Clean Tech Open Business Competition and Accelerator here. And last year, we ran over 100 events, including training events in 26 cities nationwide. The, the story, the bigger picture story is even bigger than that. Uh, we've run smaller versions of the Clean Tech Open now in 26 countries. Uh, 23 of them turned up in person to last year's global forum, which we'll be talking about in a moment. So very much a, a global effort. Four major things that we talk about when we're taking people through this process, training, mentoring, access to capital, and showcasing, you will note that there is a competition, and the competition is a very important reason that many of the companies get engaged. We will say it's not the most important reason by any means. Uh, our key here is about helping companies that have got terrific ideas get those products into the market and get to, uh, to, to launch them in the most spectacular way and successful way possible. Uh, so training, where well, we have the national academies, uh, webinars, and regional training. We're going to talk about the summer program uh, as we step through what this, this entire thing looks like. Mentoring, well, we have now over a 1,000 mentors who help with this process, both generalists who work with individual companies mm -hmm. and specialists who work across companies. So we, you know, if you have a, a question about some specific aspect of technology or about your go-to-market plan or about your financial projections, there's a database, there's a big pool of specialist mentors who can help with that. And we run business clinics, which are individual one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions with deep dives on particular topics. Access to capital, uh, a very big part of this is about helping make sure you raise funding. If you're in the market for funding, not everybody is and showcasing. Uh, there's a, a, a major part of the, uh, the goal of the Clean Tech Open is to raise the profile of the companies who participate with major events. The results have been pretty spectacular, as you'll see here. Uh, uh, nearly 600 companies in the U.S. alone have participated in this process, and about 40% of those companies have now received external funding, which if you consider that less than 1% of all the companies who apply to a venture capitalist get funded is an extraordinarily high proportion. So we're very proud of those companies and we really believe that this process can in increase your propensity to raise money. Uh, among them, those 581 companies in the US have raised now $660 million that we know about from 225 reporting companies. And the numbers are increasing. It's not an easy market to raise venture capital. It's not an easy market to raise capital in clean tech. But we've seen a big acceleration in terms of the capital raised. $154 million of that 660 was, was secured in the last uh, 12 months. So things are uh, really picking up in, you know, for many of the companies that we're working with. And here are just some examples. You'll see the range of capital raised. And these are Series A, Series B, in some cases Series C, uh, ranges from a you know, million dollars up to, uh, well, you know, 37, 40 million. Uh, in some of the big cases. So you can see that there is this capital going into many of these companies. Now, when we talk to Clean Tech Open alumni, they're really not talking so much. Uh, here is Dennis Murphy, who was a winner in 2008, saying, I've been to business school. It takes a few years. This takes a concentrated two months of your life. It's pretty intense, and it's probably more important. It really prepares you to move a company forward. And you'll see that, uh, you know, here's another comment from uh, another one of our finalists. Uh, informative workshops, extraordinary mentors, more than a competition and invaluable learning experience. Many of the companies who join us really think that it's, it's mainly about the competition and mainly that they know what they're doing. And it's really surprising how many of the, uh, of the individuals who completed and who really participate uh, discover that there's, a, there's a lot more to this and a, a lot of network to plug into which they can take advantage of as a, as a result of this. So the pathway to winning, well, I mentioned that there is a competition and it's, it's a major reason why many of the individuals concerned uh, do get involved as in, in the Clean Tech Open as entrepreneurs. Uh, we'll expect to get somewhere between 120 and 150 regional semi-finalists this year from maybe a, up to 300 applying companies. So you can see that we're going to take maybe a half, maybe more of the companies that apply. 
Uh, we are looking for ways to, to get as many of the companies who apply this year into the process. There is a finite limit to the number we can take, but uh, we will take as many as we can, as many as, as look look good and look as though they have promising technologies to, to, uh, uh, and teams to take through this process. Um, up to 24 of those companies will become regional finalists. The regional semi-finalists are is everybody who participates in all the mentoring and training and everything else that we have just mentioned. Uh, 24 of those companies will become regional finalists, and those 24 will each win $20,000 in cash and services. It's usually half and half, usually $10,000 in cash and $10,000 in the kinds of services you need to get a company off the ground. That means uh, PR services, marketing, financial, legal, the kinds of things you need to move a company forward. There will be seven regional winners. Each of those will win an, with an additional $10,000 in cash and services, and seven sustainability winners. Again, another $10,000 in cash and services, and one national winner who gets a $100,000 seed investment and another $150,000 worth of services, a grand package, therefore, for the grand prize of $250,000. So there are real reasons to participate in this and to, to take your company through to the final phases. A very, very good chance of being accepted and a very good chance of winning one of those. But as I say, the, the deal isn't about winning the prizes. It's about taking your company forward and in many, many cases about getting the company funded and so forth as a result of this process. So here's how the whole process works. You apply within your region and we will, we're going to encourage you to apply as soon as possible on the basis that as soon as you do apply and make your payment, uh, which is uh, you know, le less than a couple of hundred bucks just to, to, get, to get involved in this whole thing, uh, you will start to receive feedback and, and help. Uh, the help is really, of course, just to get your application completed, but you, you've got plenty of sources of that, and if you need help, we're going to cover how that takes place. When you qualify as a semi-finalist, which we hope everyone on this line today will do, you will receive what is conservatively estimated to be at least $45,000 worth of training, services, mentoring, uh, and the, the visibility that you're going to get. And those things include, as we move through the process, participation in the national conference. You will have, as a semi-finalist, uh, your own exhibit booth, your own space at the, in the exhibition we run at the national conference in June, and you'll be able to showcase your idea and so forth. You also have tickets to the conference itself, all included as part of the package. You then immediately after that participate in the Cleantech Open Academy, uh, which is a three-day boot camp, an initial process, a very intense three days, lots of fun to kick off the summer program. It's the beginning of the training and mentoring and so forth you attend, and we will always encourage your mentors to join, join you with that. Uh, as we move on to point five here, you will then participate in the summer program, which consists of a series of regional business clinics in your region. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions. Think of this as a bit like school, where you'll go into a, a venue and you'll have an initial session perhaps to look at your financial projection, then another session 45 minutes later to look at your go-to-market plan, and another session 45 minutes later uh, to, to look at your product viability or your validation of your product and, and so forth. So we. We go through a, a series of deep dives with individual mentors who will individually take a look at the progress you've made thus far. Uh, you'll be receiving individual help from your mentors and help from the specialist pool of mentors that you have an access, access to through a database. You'll then have a chance to present where you've got to to the regional judging panel and uh, you will have opportunities to exhibit regionally. If you are then lucky enough to become one of the up to 24 regional finalists. You will, re you will receive $20,000 worth of cash and services. Uh, you'll have exhibit space at the Global Forum, which takes place in November. The regional finals, by the way, take place in October. Uh, the Global Forum takes place in the Bay Area in November. Big global stage. That's where we bring all the Cleantech Open participants from all countries together and, of course, across the nation and a big national audience. We normally have a thousand people or more come, come see what you have to offer. Again, exhibit space, and everyone has an opportunity, semi-finalists and finalists alike, have an opportunity to get up on stage <coughs> and present. The finalists will do the, their full investor presentation. 
uh, semi-finalists will ha have a shorter opportunity, but nevertheless, you'll, we'll have you up on stage in front of the large audience to, to show off your wares and have some fun doing that. And then, of course, the winner of the grand prize of quarter million dollars worth of cash services. And all of these phases tend to come with quite a lot of press coverage. We've, we've had many, many reports of people, as soon as they've been announced as semi-finalists, starting to receive calls from the press and, and investors. Uh, obviously, if you become the grand prize winner, there tends to be quite a lot of press that, that, it, that comes with that. And we'll also make sure you get plenty of PR help and so forth to optimize your use of that press. These are the seven clean tech open regions. Now remember that um, if you are not in one of the regions that's mentioned right here, you can still apply to the clean tech open. Just apply to your locus, lo your sorry, your closest, your most local region. Uh, so, from the, in fact, the clean tech opens really grown from the west to the east. You can see here Pacific Northwest. The uh, the base of volunteers there is mainly in Seattle. The western region, all, all the way up and down the. Uh, the, the West Coast, uh, California and Nevada, the Rocky Mountain region, those five states there, North Central, which is uh, tends to the, the base of volunteers tend to be in Minneapolis, South Central, uh, which is Texas and uh, Oklahoma, and uh, the Mid Atlantic region, uh, centered in D.C., Northeast, centered in Boston. So you can see we've got plenty of, uh, of places for you to, to apply and also to receive your local training uh, and mentoring and the like. These are the six categories of the Clean Tech Open. There's a lot to do here with energy, renewable energy, energy efficiency, of course, building, green building, air, water, waste, transportation, and smart power, which includes battery technology and the smart grid. We're looking for you to let us know which of those categories you fit within. If for any reason you, you have questions about that, you know, that, which category you might fit into, then here's the place to ask those questions. Uh, however, I wouldn't worry too much about it. We get people who who make a guess as to which category they fit into, and the judges will simply move you into a different category if they think that your application has gone into the wrong one. There is absolutely no downside in just making a guess. I wouldn't agonize over it. So if you have questions, the number to dial is 888-989-6736. That's 989-OPEN. It's an 800 number. It's toll free. It'll cost you nothing to call it. So 888-989-OPEN. Uh, or you can complete a ticket at cleantechopen.com slash question business competition. Uh, it, in fact, completing a ticket is probably the most efficient way to make sure you get all your questions answered because there's a bank of people who answer those. cleantechopen.com slash question business competition is the way to do that. <clears throat> when you qualify as a semi-finalist, there are a whole host of events. You can participate. Some of these shown here actually are events that have taken place already this year, like the annual launch, uh, and uh, oops, hang on, like the uh, annual launch and the breakfast briefings, which take place earlier in the year. But there are networking events. You'll see uh, bottom left here. There's the national conference, and then the regional awards. National conference is in June. The regional awards are in October, and the global forum, which is our biggest event of the year, which takes place in November. Uh, then, of course, there's uh, press and uh, capital events, the, the academy, business clinics, the investor series. The investor series is, is, is lots of fun. We run something called Investor Connect at the Global Forum at the end of the year where, where VCs and the like sit still at tables with numbers on them, and you'll, you'll move around every seven minutes. It's kind of speed dating for, uh, for investors. It's a great fun thing to, to participate in. It's also a very important thing and uh, one of the major reasons to be part of this whole process. Once you qualify as a semi-finalist, uh, you in some regions will be matched to a mentor. Uh, you will have immediate access to the, to the specialist mentor database. But the major thing is that you have access to the team here to help you. Just give us a buzz and we'll help you with the process of making sure that you understand the details of completing your application. Uh, Exhibition space at the National Conference. Now, let's make sure you have the dates of these events. So the very first thing you will be invited to, assuming you are selected as a semi-finalist, is the June 21st National Conference, which takes place in San Jose, in California. We usually have about 1,000 people attend that. Uh, you will have exhibit space, and you'll also have lots of other opportunities to meet potential investors and other people in the community. So the National Conference is, 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's a terrific thing. June 21st, get it in your calendar early because we want to make sure you can, you can make it. Uh, you then have an opportunity to participate in one of the two national academies. There's one on the West Coast, which is immediately after <coughs> the event I've just mentioned, immediately after the national uh, conference in San Jose. And there is another opportunity, if you can't make the West Coast, uh, you obviously would miss the conference potentially if you don't do this, but you can go to the National, Com national Academy, which takes place in Boston on the 28th and 29th of June. I'm going to stop for a quick second. Any questions thus far? If you have any questions, just raise your hand. Uh, actually, let's make sure everyone knows how to, how to raise your hand if you want to do that. And then we'll make sure you're unmuted so you can do that. Um, there's a place where you can click if you have any questions. We'll have, a, we'll have lots of time for questions at the end of this process. You are unmuted right now if you, uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask. Anyone at this stage like to ask anything? Okie doke. Well, we'll go, we'll go back into uh, the, the presentation. So, the National Conference on the 21st of June in San Jose, the National Academy, 22nd to 24th, the, uh, which takes place in San Jose. The Academy is the three-day intensive process to get started with the Clean Tech Open. Uh, it's, it's really the beginning of the whole training and mentoring process, and we very strongly suggest that you participate in, in the conference. It is mandatory to participate, to participate in the Academy. You, you can't be part of this unless you participate in one of these two academies. Uh, that's the 22nd and 24th in San Jose, June the 28th to 29th, a two-day academy in Boston, Massachusetts, if you can't make the West Coast event. And you'll see lots of things you'll be covering, including getting started with polishing up your 10 to 15-minute investor pitch, if indeed um, in reaching out to investors is part of what your process is. Now, the academies are succeeded by a 10-week summer program. Now, the 10 weeks that take place through July, August, and early September, cover each of the 10 topics that we cover. And it's, it's very much a continuum. It starts with building something called the Business Model Canvas. Uh, we do not, by the way, ask you to write a business plan. There are strong reasons against writing business plans. As an early stage entrepreneur, we want you to be out of the building talking to potential customers and potential investors and people who can help validate your uh, your business, not in the lab or, or, or hiding in, in your office or your back bedroom writing business plans. It's not part of what we ask you to do. Instead, we ask you to complete a series of, of short workshops of the, the key aspects of making a business successful. Uh, it starts with the business model canvas and then goes through technology validation. We call this de-risking. It's something which, if you want, investment is very important. Can we take the risk out of the technology? Uh, even if you don't have a prototype yet, if you're in a technology that needs a prototype, there are ways of getting validation from third parties that simply say, well, this thing could work. If you do have a prototype, so much the better. If you do have a production model, again, so much the better. We then move on to go to market and financial analysis and risk analysis. Uh, the execution of your of your of your plan, of your business model, and the team you need to execute, uh, legal and uh, organizational issues, sustainability, uh, and then finally finishing up with both as assessing your mentor, but much more importantly, polishing up your presentation and generating a short executive summary. It's very much a continuum of things, and you will see that there are business clinics which take place in August, and you'll get lots of individual help with these things. You'll need to walk into those clinics with your drafts ready. So that's the 10-week summer program. Uh, this is what the Tuesdays uh, look like. Now, bear in mind, we're not going to be asking you to give up 10 weeks of your life to participate in all of this. Uh, we are going to ask you to give up some of every, every Tuesday in August, September, Sorry, July, August, and the bit of September. So some of every Tuesday, and some Tuesdays, well, that'll be you know, most of the day, and some Tuesdays it'll just be an hour or so. 
Uh, but this is what a Tuesday will look like. You'll see that in, in the different regions, we have business clinics typically in the mornings, and then we're running a webinar, a national webinar, or a local seminar in the afternoon. So uh, that's your commitment. Some of every Tuesday to work on your business, not in your business. Some of every Tuesday to re you know, really to move your business forward. Um, winners, those who become regional winners, uh, they're actually finalists in the competition. And when they start up in a box package of cash and services, $20,000 worth of cash and services on which uh, you can start to use to build your business, and you, you will receive a lot of feedback in that judging process. The feedback, as we'll tell you, is, is worth more than the cash. It's far more important to have a successful business than it is just to win this competition. And everybody, semi-finalists and finalists alike, are invited to participate in the Global Forum, which is our biggest event of the year. Lots of opportunities to showcase your technology to participate in the Investor Connect, which I mentioned to you, and to present to judges if you're a finalist, or to get up on stage and do an, a, an elevator pitch or something similar, uh, product demonstrations and so forth, if you're a semi-finalist. If you're the winner of the grand prize, you'll find that uh, that's an extremely good thing to walk away with. Uh, and everybody who's participated, semi-finalists onwards, are part of the alumni network for life. There's, there's no cost for participating as an alumnus, and you'll have opportunities to participate in, in ongoing events. Every alumnus company is invited, for instance, to come back again and exhibit at uh, future events as you progress. So to get started, to enter the competition in 2012, there's a very easy URL. All of these, by the way, if they're not already, will be posted on the uh, registration page for this event. But to enter the competition this year, uh, cleantechopen.com slash launch here. You'll need a minimum of two team members by May the 8th. In fact, uh, as long as you've completed your application and as long as you have a single team member and you've paid your application fee, you're okay on May the 8th. But you will need to have a second team member signed up in time for the academy, uh, which takes place, as you know, in, uh, in June. And you can upload, uh, you, can, you can answer the questions to the application, and you can answer the questions as often as you like. In other words, you can keep on submitting and keep on submitting. It's only the final version that you submit uh, that gets looked at by the judges after May the 8th. And there is a useful, helpful video which will take you through the process. If you, uh, if you needed additional assistance with how to complete your application and, and how this process all works. Criteria. Uh, you, now, we are working with early stage clean tech companies. So in order to be really clear, if you want to be you know, near as darn it sure that you will make it into the clean tech open in 2012, these are the things you need to concern yourself with. So this is, this is an important part of the process. The first thing is that you need to meet the application criteria. You need to have less than a million dollars worth of external private financing. That means funding from third parties like uh, angel investors or venture capitalists. You need to have less than $5 million worth of grants or friends and family uh, funding altogether. That means a total of $6 million between those two different types of funding. You need to have at least one U.S. resident, citizen, or legal alien on your team. It's very, very important that you have Nexus in the U.S. because you're entering the U.S. Clean Tech Open. There's an application fee of $140 per team, so it's it's very inexpensive to to apply. $90 if you're a student, and then all the things we've mentioned, everything that we talked about, all the mentoring, all the training, uh, meals at the major events, exhibit space, Wi-Fi. Everything is covered. We just charge, though, that at cost price with a participation fee of $475 per person. That covers all of your training, all the mentoring, all the materials, all the everything else. Uh, this is, of course, heavily subsidized. The only reason it's feasible for us to do these many months' worth of activities for $475 is because of the generosity of our sponsors and volunteers across the country. So that's what it takes to get in, in, involved. Participation in fee, as I've mentioned, includes the academies, the training, uh, mentoring, uh, the, the, the meals, 
receptions. We have a, a VIP. We have a reception where you know wine and hors d'oeuvre and so forth at the conferences. Exhibit space, Wi-Fi, uh, and you also get tickets to those events. In fact, the tickets by themselves are worth all of the four hundred seventy-five dollars. So you get uh, all of that included. You also get uh, this year the new book from Steve Blank, and you'll you'll get for those of you for whom it's appropriate, you'll get a copy of AutoCAD. Uh, the, the Autodesk product design suite, free of charge, that by itself is worth ten thousand dollars. So it's uh, it's uh, it's crucial. It, it, it is um, mandatory anyway to attend either the East or West Coast Academy, but you will be able to sign up for that at the academy itself. The deadline for submissions this year, just to make sure everyone's really clear on it, is Tuesday, May the eighth. That's not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday afterwards. At midnight Pacific time, uh, you need to make sure you've paid your $475 per team member, and you will have to pay that twice, minimum of two people on your team. Uh, you uh, should, we strongly encourage you to come to the conference, and the, it is mandatory to attend the one or the, another of the national academies. It, uh, you can attend both of them. If no one on your team can make it, please send a deputy. We have had people who have sent uh, you know, brothers or sisters or other members of their company along to join us for that event. The clinics will take place on Tuesdays uh, in July, August, and September. In fact, there are only business links on three of those days. So the webinars are actually the things that take place on those dates. The worksheet deadline is... Uh, um, is September the 10th this year. Remember the, the, the short worksheets I mentioned. And regional mock judging takes place on September the 18th. So you'll have a chance to make your presentation to, the, to some mock judges to, to, to just trial your investor presentation and so forth on September the 18th. The actual judging will take place in early October and the Global Forum in November, as I just mentioned. Okay. Um, all of this is made possible by a group of terrific sponsors, the biggest of which is Chevron, who are our global partner. We have a national education partner. You'll see a lot of them in the academy and the summer training, the University of Phoenix. Uh, we, Wells Fargo, we're also delighted to have as a national sponsor who are participating with us in, in all regions. And then a whole host of regional and multi-regional sponsors, at Wilson, Sonsini, the Massey Energy Center, CTSI, Google, Commercial Energy, Reed Smith, PG&E, uh, Dow Chemical, Marsh Fishman, Brayfogle, Price Waterhouse Coopers, uh, Southern California Ed Edison, Mintz Levin, Jones Lang LaSalle, Silicon Valley Bank, Patton Boggs, Fagri, Baker Daniels, Deloitte, Walmart, Foley Hoag, Puget Sound Energy, American Company, uh, Northwest. Nevada Energy. Oh, sorry, that's Nevada Energy, who are our newest sponsor, actually. That's Nevada Energy. Uh, Bingham, who are a law firm. SN Kana, EKSNH. Uh, that one there is Burston Martha, I think. Um, Black and Veatch. Applied. Uh, Applied Materials, uh, or Pangea Ventures, and Venrock, who are also in, um, venture capitalists. So you can see all these companies, they are the ones, please be grateful to them, they are the ones who are making it feasible for you to participate in all of this at pretty much no cost. So how to make darn sure or near as darn that your application will get accepted? Well, here are the round one judging criteria. And look at the three top things, first and foremost. The, the, the second two things, basic due diligence and funding, are, are crucial. You can't you can't not meet these criteria, but the things for you to focus on, if you're, if you're clear that you meet the funding criteria and basic due diligence, the three things to focus your attention on are technology, market, and team. Essentially, we're looking for you to have an exciting technology, uh, an exciting technology which is potentially disruptive and or demonstrates the potential for sustainable competitive advantage, something exciting which is going to change the world in some positive way. That's the most crucial first thing. The potential market for your technology needs to be large enough for sustained business growth. If you're looking for venture capital, that typically means you need to have a billion dollar market or more, but not everyone will have venture capital as being the appropriate funding source 
for you. Some of you will be looking to uh, you know, just angel investors, and some of you won't be looking for funding of any kind. You'll want to grow your businesses organically. That's also fine, but a big enough market to sustain your business and a credible team with two people on it, a team that uh, really is good and will be able to attract additional quality team members. Those are the three key things. Focus on those three key things, and you will do extremely well in the application process. It's very, very likely we will take you into the Clean Tech Open, and we'll be working with you this year. It's a, it's a very simple process, uh, and we're aiming to, to, to keep focus on a on a limited number of things. Not that you you've got everything together, all your I's dotted and your T's crossed, as if you have completed the process when you first join us. Um, Diligence and funding. Well, the funding side, you know already that you need to have a million dollars worth of private third-party capital and $5 million worth of all of the sources, including your own money. Uh, and on a diligence front, you need to own your own IP or have some kind of li appropriate license to your IP or to a key improvement in the IP or at least a reasonable expectation of being able to secure a license. So we're pretty, you know, we're, we're not asking you to have everything buttoned up in many cases. Uh, you will not have your patent uh, complete by the time you start with us. You may not have your license secured, but you will need to make sure that you have, uh, I mean, in the case of a university, for instance, uh, sometimes the, the companies that start with the Clean Tech Open have not yet got their license from the university, but you need to prove that it, it is very likely that you will be able to secure such a license. Uh, you need to be clear that your IP claims are valid and uh, obviously we're looking for, for good team members with a, you know, a, a strong reputation in the space. Um, now online, you'll see that uh, when you complete your application form, there are therefore just a few areas of the form that you need to focus on, the technology and IP area, the market area, and the company. Those are the three areas, so do focus on those. Also make sure, of course, you complete your, uh, your existing funding that you've received. So, how do you start your journey here? Well, I'm going to ask Nancy Bahamondes just to kind of guide us through the steps to starting your journey with the Clean Tech Open. So, the first step would be to please join us at the top of our page, of our webpage. Please um, join us by creating an account for you and your potential team members. The next step would be to go to the main ribbon which shows the competition and apply. You create the team, and you check the box on the bottom that it says, and you read your the liability um, form, and you agree. You choose your category and the type of team you are. If you are a student team, which means that the team leader and the great majority of the team, whether you have two people or more, are students, then you qualify as a student team. If you are a professional, then you are a professional team. It does not matter what category you choose because uh, when our mentors and judges review your application, they will determine if you are not in the right category, they will place you in the right category and notify you. There are five steps to complete the application. The first one was obviously to create a team. The second one is pay your application fee before May 8th. The third would be to create, um, to to request a mentor if you need a mentor at this point of the application, to get a team uh, member, and uh, to complete your application, your online application, which has uh, 10 questions that you need to um, take some time and, and go through it. You can save it as many times as you wish, all the way until May 8th, as long as you do not click the final save. If you are happy with the, with the 10 questions and the way you have completed it, you by all means can click final save. Also, uh, to add a team member, it's a very simple process. You first um, go to your dashboard and you click on request a team member and send an invitation. You're, you will be um, putting the name of the team member that you want to request with their email address. Make sure that the team member that you are asking uh, to add to your team has a CleanTech Open account and that you're using the same email address that you uh, that they have used to create their account. So that way the system can recognize that person and match 
them to your team so you, they can collaborate on the application and every step of the process so they can get the notifications to the upcoming events and also um, so they can they can be informed on any last minute changes if there are any. It's a very important point that to please make sure that before you issue an invitation that your team members have first set up their account and that if they set up an account with a certain email address, you use that same email address, email address to send the invitation to. We just occasionally have challenges with this where someone uses their Gmail account and you put their Yahoo account in and obviously the system can't recognize them if you're using different email addresses. By the way, they can add as many email addresses as they like to their account. So as long as they put all the email addresses in, it'll still recognize them, but uh, they, they do need to have that same email address in there. The next step would be for they will be receiving an email that says from the Cleantech Open inviting them and showing them that you are asking for them to join. They would just have to very easily click that click the link on the email and they will be part of your team. So they will be able to see their the team when they log in onto their account and they can collaborate right there on the very top of of the screen. So it makes it very convenient uh, for them to use the same to all of of your team members to collaborate if they use their dashboard. So as you go, as you complete the, check, the steps, you will see little check marks on each, each category. When you are trying to complete a next step, please click on the blue uh, link. Don't try to click on the box because it will not allow you to um, continue to the next step. Then um, as you go through the application, please do not wait until the last day, which is May the 8th, to complete the application because it does take time to answer all these questions and you want to have the best opportunity to complete the application uh, with time. And um, the last but not least is the completing your team profile. You do not need to complete this last step uh, until, if you have time it's great, uh, the last step you, we require from you is to get a logo of your team. So when we, if you are selected as a semi-finalist, you will have an opportunity to exhibit at the national conference and we will be able to add your logo to the table topper that we will put for your company. So it is important that you complete all these steps. If you get stuck, please use the ticket system or give me a call. I'm here basically from uh, 7.30 in the morning until 6 Pacific time. So if you do not get a hold of me, just leave me a message and I will get back to you. Most likely, I am on the phone speaking to a an applicant. One um, key step during your application is when you are requesting a mentor, there is a question that says, do you require a mentor to complete your online application? If you click no, you will not be given the option of obtaining a mentor. If you click yes and there is not a mentor in your immediate area, we will find one for you. Now sometimes people who join these calls are interested in other ways of getting involved in the Clean Tech Open. As we mentioned, it's, uh, it's a very large network of people who uh, help to make all this happen. And there are a whole bunch of different ways to become engaged in this. You can volunteer mentor partner sponsor. We're looking for people who are willing to help us cover some of these, these costs through donations and of course we're always looking for people who can who will join the uh, national conference and, uh, and uh, the global forum as, uh, as audience members. Alrighty, so that covers this morning's overview. We've got good time left to answer your questions, but let me, before we move on, just uh, mention that we are going to have our final applicant webinar one week before this year's deadline. That means Tuesday, May the 3rd at 10 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Mountain, 12 noon Central, and 1 p.m. Eastern we'll be having uh, our final applicant webinar. We will be inviting, we have invited, and uh, 
and Matt Trevithick has accepted the invitation to join us. He is a partner at Venrock, which is a very, very highly active clean tech venture firm. Matt Trevithick will be joining us on that day, and he'll be giving us some of the perspectives from a venture capitalist working in the clean tech space and some of the things that they'll be looking for for firms who enter this process. Uh, these slides will be available, and there's also a recording of today's webinar, and it's all available online at this link here, which is also available in multiple places on the Cleantech Open website, and we'll make an easier version of this URL as well. So we'll post a very simple version of that URL so you can find this applicant webinar. Alrighty, well, that covers the, the Clean Tech Open, the, uh, the application process and so forth. Nancy's just going in here and she's going to unmute you all. Uh, we have Helen Lambert with us. She unfortunately had lost her voice, which is not very good for a, for a <laughs> webinar. <laughs> um, but between us, we're, we're here. We're going to answer your questions. Helen Lambert is our, is our programs manager. Uh, between us, we'll answer your questions. Helen might be croaking at you. Nancy, Nancy and I will do our best to answer any questions, and you are all unmuted, so uh, please fire away. And it seems that, uh, Finn, you have your hand up already, so uh, fire away. Rex, how you doing? Um, yeah, this is Finn Doyle with Solus Industries here in Colorado. Um, Terrific. Yeah, Thank I've you, got Finn. three quick questions for you. Yes, sir. Um, the first is, on the, um, um, in the uh, application, is there a uh, method or way to submit um, basically an online video. Our technology is very uh, visual, and we have about a one-minute um, uh, video showing the technology in its operation. Um, it's not like it's a marketing-type video, but is there a method for including that with the application? So here's the answer to the question. Um, in, the in the first round, don't worry about it because the judging process for the first round, remember, we're focused on those three things. Uh, you are able to upload, upload two pages in PDF format of any material you like. So take some screenshots from the video, drop, drop those in there, gotcha. uh, include anything that, that covers uh, the basics on there, diagrams and so forth are good. You will be able to use your video in all the subsequent rounds of judging. But I say don't worry about it in the first round only because if your technology looks credible and exciting and interesting and so forth, the judges don't need to see your video in order to, to gather that. So there isn't an opportunity to upload any of those things. The judges need to have a relatively simple way of just making their early decisions. But you do have those two pages of material. You can put anything you like onto those two page, onto that two page PDF. Fantastic. That will work uh, just as well. And Rex, second question, um, when we get in front of uh, the judges, be it regional or the nationals, do we have the uh, ability to know who those judges are or will be as far as you know, their bios and general description of who the judging judges are? Another terrific question. Now, we, we get this one quite a lot. Uh, the judges will introduce themselves to you when they uh, start the judging session, but we typically do not announce the details of judges in advance. And the only reason for that is that we uh, are keen not to have a situation where people are tempted to, to contact the judges in advance uh, of the session. So. <laughs> so, and we also make the point that, yes, it's terrific to, to tailor your presentation to individuals. However, we're much, we're much keener that you generate a terrific presentation that, that you can use for a large audience, that you can use in all circumstances, rather than one which is just focused on a, on a handful of individuals that happen to be in the judging session on that particular day. So uh, that you'll know who they are once they've introduced themselves. Fantastic. Once again, <clears throat> makes sense to me. And uh, last, one, last one, Rex. Um, is there any um, resource on the uh, Clean Tech Open website as far as videos or um, of past judging or presentations? Um, I've spent quite a lot of time on the website trying to find anything um, that might show a video of a, of a past presentation in front of judges. Is there any resources like that for uh, new applicants like myself? Right, so what we do have is presentations made by alumni companies at previous Clean Tech Open conferences. Uh, and what we'll do, Finn, is thank you for this request. We'll make sure that we post 
some of those so you can see the kinds of presentations those people make. Well, uh, I, you, that would be, Rex, that would be invaluable to just kind of see where, where we're eventually going to head. Um, uh, yes. You know, a presentation that someone would allow to be uh, put up on the Internet would be fantastic. Yes, we'll, we'll do that. And, of course, that's what a lot of the, of the training and mentoring are about. So gotcha. uh, there's plenty of access to that kind of material through the summer training process. Through the event. As, as always, I'm just a little ahead of myself. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are great questions. Thank you for asking them. You bet. I thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Finn. Looking forward to seeing you. You bet. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Now, there are many others of you on the line. Anyone else have any questions, or have we done such an outstanding job of answering them that uh, you don't have any questions for us? Anyone else want to ask anything right now? Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yeah, this is Mark Lowenstern with Yellow Bellow. Hello, Mark. We can. You're a bit quiet. Uh, Mark Lowenstern. Yes, Mark Lowenstern with Yellow Bellow. Oh. Very good. We're lo delighted to have you on the call, Mark. We can we can hear you better now. Okay, I I I have a question in regards to the financial requirements so based on what I just saw. I have to show that I've already have over one about one million dollars in private investment first before I can apply. Is this correct? Other way around. Other way around. Well, if you have if you have more than a million dollars worth of private investment, then you're too big for the clean tech open. All right. So, um, are there minimums, maximums? There's no, what normal amount? What what? Well, I'm glad you've asked this question because obviously if, it, if I was in any way unclear, then I apologize for that. No, there's no minimum. We, we are here to help early stage companies. So if you've raised no third-party capital of any kind, you're in good shape. If you have happened to have raised $1.3 million worth of venture capital, then you would not meet the criteria. So we are looking not to raise that kind of money, not companies who have. There's no minimum. Right. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thanks. Good. Again, apologies if I wasn't clear on that, but uh, those numbers, a million dollars worth of third-party venture capital, uh, five million dollars worth of all other sources of funding, including the kind of money you've got from your mom and from the sock under your pillow and any of those other places that you have personally funded, there's five million dollars worth of, of all other sources of capital, including grant. Uh, and that gives us a total of six as a maximum that companies can receive before entering the clean tech open. Okay. This is Stan Klein. I have a, a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, some of the questions in the application, especially you know dealing with uh, financial projections, are somewhat daunting. Uh, we we had to do one at one point, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, time went by and 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 it it, uh, it it didn't happen. Things didn't happen that way. And uh, so, you know, do we just give those our best shot, uh, or 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 what do we do about those? Give me a best shot. All financial projections, by definition, are fiction. Uh, none of us. I don't think I've ever seen a financial projection that's, that's, that's ever come out the way that uh, it was written in the first place in reality because it's predicting the future. So it's your, it's your best guess. Okay. The, the, the other question has to do – our um, our business model from the outset has been more or less open source. Uh -huh. um, we, do, we do have a patent application on one particular – uh, application of of the technology, which is basically implementation of certain standards, um, but uh, uh, you know, aside from that, um, our, as I say, our our, uh, our business model has generally been open source. Uh, so, h how would we deal with that on the on the issue of uh, patenting? Well, is there some aspect of what you're doing which is unique? Is the way that you're piecing these things together unique? Is there some aspect of your business model that's different from the way that other people could do this? In other words, 
are you doing something which is differentiable and which have a, has a sustainable competitive advantage? If not, uh, could a, another company simply come in and copy what, everything you're doing and eat your lunch? Um, yeah, well, okay. So, we, so those are the questions we have to try to um, try to answer. That's that's the question we're we're forcing you. We're obliging you to think about because really, a, a business which has nothing that differentiates itself from from potential competitors or current competitors, a business that uh, could be immediately copied easily. Um, is a business which you should be thinking very carefully about whether you should be pursuing. Well, I, I guess that there are there could be some aspects that uh, we've done that we can withhold, you know, the, the, uh, certain aspects such as our tools, and we've developed some tools for uh, for various things and um, some other aspects that we could reasonably withhold there are parts there are parts of what we've done that uh, where we're using uh, standard open source toolkits that, that and so is everybody else right. except that except that what we <laughs> except that we pioneered we pioneered aspects of the technology that have yet to be accepted by the industry so the, the big question is do you have a sustainable competitive advantage is there something you are doing which is going to allow you to sustain your business and to grow your business uh, and if there is you know work hard to uh, to understand it and to explain it to us so we, we, we understand what your business can do that's going to make it profitable and and by the way we're not you know we're in the business to, to help people to make big environmental improvements to the planet. But ultimately, we're aware that businesses that don't have a business model, that don't have a sustainable competitive advantage, are unlikely to succeed. And, and therefore, you know, we're looking for ways to ensure that you have that right from the outset. OK. I mean, you know, there are, there are ways within, the, within an open source business model to do things, and we just have to focus on some of those. Good. OK. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that we're getting you thinking about that. Okay, thank you, Stan. A any other questions from anyone else on this call? We uh, we still have a few minutes. Uh, I have a question. It's uh, Nick Beanie from Beanie Shells. So, what's your first name? Uh, Nick. Nico Beanie. All right, we see you, Nicolo. Hi, Nick. Yes. Far away. I'm sorry. Far away. Uh, I missed that. Oh, okay. Um, my question was primarily to do with team members. Um, Sort of uh, uh, developing my technology on my own with a series of uh, uh, people sort of helping along in the capacity of advisors and and, and technical advisors. Um, I I can sort of elect one of those as 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 a team member, but I'm wanting to understand better uh, what. Um, roles and responsibilities team members may have and the interest that you have in having more than one person sort of in any specific team? Very good question, Nick, and thank you for raising it. So remember, we call them team members, not company members. In most cases, uh, those companies that are incorporated and they join the Clean Tech Open, both team members are members of the company. But really for the purposes of the Clean Tech Open, they are the participants in the activities that we're going to engage in here. So if they're on your Clean Tech Open team, they are the two or more people because you can have as many team members as you like. It's just that if they're going to participate, we're going to have to cover the basic costs of meals and so on and so forth, $475. Uh, those are the participating individuals. They're going to come to the academy. They're going to participate in the business clinics and the mentoring and the training and up on stage and you know, all part of the, the fun learning process that Clean Tech Open is. That's the only criterion. When you come to present in your investor pitch, here are my team members, this is what my company looks like, here are my advisors, you, you will be listing people who uh, you would normally list if you were doing an investor presentation or any, or any, any other kind of presentation to say, here's my company, isn't it impressive? So your your interest is in educating more than one person uh, 
and and in having more than one person participate uh in 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 your programs i i'm i'm still a little bit unclear uh and and i'm sorry about this i mean i'm sure it makes perfect sense for most companies but in my particular situation um i'm just trying to grasp uh what um is it about having uh, two or more members uh that that is critical again it's a very very good question the reason that we have and it's been a requirement since the very early days of the clean tech open even before my time here uh, the reason for the two member limit is, is, has been borne out many, many times. It's simply really there because we found that the Clean Tech Open is a uh, is something which is going to take up some of your time every single week, and that having two team I members see. really helps share the load, really helps that if one person can't make a, a given uh, judging opportunity or a given mentoring opportunity or a given training session or a webinar or something, that you have another person you can fall back on it. We've also found that really having two people to celebrate, to, to work through the process, uh, really can have a dramatic Im improving impact on the ability to, to, to get a lot out of this. Great. Thanks. Got it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. We're very much looking forward to meeting you. Likewise. Good, super. Well, we, uh, we're coming up on the time, but we are going to keep the lines open. We'll stay here as long as you have questions. Anyone else have questions? All righty. Well, I'll assume that that's a, uh, that means that we've done such a terrific job of covering the basics with you that uh, we've covered everything you want. Do bear in mind that uh, we have all sorts of online resources for you. Uh, there are FAQs on the website. There is a ticket system on the website. If you go to cleantechopen.com slash uh, question business competition, I think, wasn't it? Do you mind just going back to that slide? Question business competition. Uh, then you can ask your questions there. If you have anything else you want to ask us, then please phone us or complete a ticket, and we'll be more than pleased to help. And if you want specific help with completing your application, then there are lots of ways of getting that as well, and we can, uh, we can also assign mentors to you as a program. Nancy's just winding back to the, uh, the slide that shows you that. Uh, if there are no other questions, we'll leave that slide up as we complete this but we will uh, say thank you very much for joining us. Uh, phone numbers to call us, 888-989-6736. That's 888-989-OPEN or www.cleantechopen.com slash question business competition if you have any questions you'd like to ask us at any stage. Looking forward very much to meeting you at the Conference and Academy in June, and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.